everybody, I'm Allison back with another Artie Party. Today we are going to do acrylic pores. So this is an abstract technique and there's no wrong way to do it, which makes it a really, really soothing activity. So what you're going to need is you are going to need some things to paint on. You can do canvas. Um, for one of the projects we're going to do today, you might want some cling film. Um, you can do canvas, you can use a board, you can use paper. Uh, just make sure if you're using paper that it's heavy enough to take a lot of acrylic paint. So you probably want something a little bit stiffer. Um, but pouring is made possible by this fun stuff. Now there's a couple different brands of pouring medium. It doesn't really matter which brand you use. Liquitex and Golden are really nice, but there's a lot of other brands that work really well. This is the magic ingredient. What this does is, you know usually when you put colors together, they mix and make a third color? This keeps them from doing that. Instead, they just all slide along next to each other without mixing. So you can get really, really pretty fluid pores on your surfaces. They're going to be really abstract. They kind of look like paper marbling. Um, sometimes they look like oceans. Sometimes they look like splats. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and we're going to cover a couple. Now, one thing I do want to point out, see this funny spot in mine? I didn't make sure that this one was perfectly level while it was drying. So if you don't do that, as the paint dries, it's going to keep sliding and you'll end up with some weird ripples like this one. So this one was flat and you can see it got a nice shiny perfect surface. This one came out great. This one, I didn't quite make sure it was flat. So if that's important to you, definitely make sure that your items dry flat. Now we actually did a big project as a family where um, some of our relatives wanted some big abstract art to go on their very, very long wall in their living room. So they got some really big canvases, some acrylic paint, that's another thing you're going to need by the way, and um, some pouring medium, and we're talking big canvases. We put tarps all over the floor. We made sure the furniture was covered and we sat down with the kids and our relatives and we were pouring paint everywhere and using four people to tip giant canvases to make really big pieces. Uh, we made five canvases that day and they have four of them hanging over their couch. They figured one of them would come out a little weird and wouldn't quite match. So they, they estimated correctly and it looks amazing. So if you are looking for something fun to do as a group, you know, we had ages down to seven helping out with that, <laughs> with that project. There was a uh, slapdash drying rack constructed for that with little uh, wooden shims to make sure that the uh, big canvases dried flat and there was again plastic sheeting underneath to make sure any drips did not end up on anyone's hardwood floors. Like I said, make sure your workspace is protected for this project. <laughs> it is going to be messy. We're going to make a mess today. In fact, if you wear wings, you probably want to take them off. I'm going to take mine off and put them on the other side of my desk. Um, so this is what it looks like when you do uh, a pour on a surface. Now you can also do what's called an acrylic skin. You can pour onto plastic wrap, just random pour. You can do all kinds of things with this now. This is flexible, all kinds of foldable. You can make, you can cut chunks out of this and make jewelry. You can um, glue it into a collage or the background of another piece all kinds of fun things. Oh, some people like to embed crystals or glitter into their pores while they're working. Um, other people like to do a pour, see how it comes out, and then paint something on top of it. Because you can paint with acrylic or with oils on top of an acrylic pour. Everything works. 
These things are super fun. I'm sorry, I love playing with skins. They just feel so weird. I know the word skin is a little strange, but trust me, when you touch it, you'll understand what I mean. So you're gonna definitely need acrylic paint. Soft body is better. So if you can get a fluid acrylic or something that's a little more liquidy, craft paints are great. Soft body is great. And you're also going to need enough pouring medium to do half and half with each of your colors. So the more colors you have, the more pouring medium you're gonna need because you gotta do one part <laughs> paint and one part, one part pouring medium. So 50% paint, 50% pouring medium. It doesn't have to be exact, but you gotta be pretty close. Otherwise your um, paint, you'll know if your paint is not runny enough, you will know that you need to add some more boring medium to it. So let's get started. I'm gonna move my examples over to the side here. Dear skin, please move over. You feel so weird. I'm gonna put some paper down to protect my workspace. Like I said, got my rings off. I've got my apron on. I'm gonna put a couple pieces of paper on here actually just to protect from any drips because there will probably be some drips. Um, now the first thing we're going to do is I want to do two little canvases like I did for my example. Now one of the things you can do is you can let the paint just run straight off the edge of your pour and like just let your pour go right off the edge, encourage it to do that and that way your painting will go all the way off the edges of your pieces. If you're going to do that, you need to make sure that your painting is not touching the surface that it will be drawing on while it's drying, <laughs> because if it is, it will glue itself to your <laughs> surface uh, because acrylic paint is basically Elmer's glue with color in it. Uh, the plastic polymer is very similar. So an easy way to make sure that it's not touching, thumbtacks. So just if you're doing one of these, oh, hey, that thumbtack doesn't have a push. <laughs> that won't work. So just grab some thumbtacks and kind of squish them into the corners of your canvas. Um, and this works with like any size canvas. You really just want to get your piece just a little bit off of the surface. Now remember what I said earlier about making sure that it's flat. <laughs> make sure that your uh, make sure that your thumbtacks are kind of wait that one doesn't want to go in far enough. Make sure that your thumbtacks are kind of going in at all the same height so that it will be flat and we'll check that in a minute. Um, you might find some that have nasty, uh, nasty tips and don't want to go in. That happens sometimes. I recommend using thumbtacks that you don't want to use for anything else ever again. Uh, just, you know, some inexpensive ones, not your cute ones. If you like cute ones, uh, cause they're going to get covered in paint and likely will never come off. All right. So that's pretty that's pretty good. Um, it's a little, a little slope. So I'm going to push that one in a little more. That, that seems, mm. that's pretty flat. Let's see if we can, yeah, that's pretty steady. Okay. So now we're going to do this one. Get that all set up. Now, there are a couple of different ways to do your pores. Um, I went ahead before we got started and measured on some cups, a teaspoon and a teaspoon, so that I could do my half and half recipe for each of my colors. I'm kind of going for a beachy theme here. So I picked a little bit of gold and then I've got turquoise, a nice royal, a nice cobalt blue rather, Got like a, te a teal turquoise cobalt blue a white and then i've got this really nice sky blue turquoise color um, i already mixed up these colors with the pouring medium but i'm going to show you one of them so that way you don't have to sit here while i mixed and measured all of them because that is no fun 
one is bent. That one is not bent. We'll use that one. It's just really hard to work with them when the tips are so bent. I'm using really old thumbtacks that honestly are ready to die. <laughs> They're ready to go. They're, they've served their purpose. They're done with life. Okay, so that's steady, but it feels like it's a little high in one corner. I feel like this corner might be a little tall. Okay, so that feels pretty flat for both of those. And this tray is not the best, but it will keep the paint from going everywhere. So I'm going to put these in here. Try and get them pretty flat. All right, so I am going to mix up this last color of paint. Oh, I was telling you that there's a couple of different ways to do your pour. You can keep them each in a separate cup and just dump colors on. Individually, you can smear them around with a spoon or a plastic fork or whatever you like, uh, or you can just um, roll them around the way we're going to do in just a minute. Um, you have a little more control over what goes where that way. So if you want a little bit of control over what you're doing, you might want to do that. The other option is what is known affectionately Ooh, getting down to the bottom of this bottle. I love this color. I always use it. <laughs> so the other option is what is known as a, oops, I put a little too much in there. I'm actually going to pour a little out of there into here. Let's see if we can get that a little closer to even. Because I got to even it up with the, uh... remember how I said if you have too much paint and not enough pouring medium, things don't go well? We don't want that to happen. All right. That should be, that looks closer to correct. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exact, but you're gonna know if you don't have enough pouring medium. Now I'm filling up. It's a little harder to see that other line now, but I can still kind of see it. kind of see that it's going up to the line. Meh. Meniscus is my enemy. The other option is what's called a dirty pour. And we're going to do one of those too. That is where you dump a little bit of every color into another cup. You don't stir it. You just dump a little bit of every color into the cup and then dump whatever happens out. Because the pouring medium keeps the colors from mixing, it kind of comes out looking like an agate geode. It's really cool. So I'm going to do some more controlled pours on one of these. And then I'm going to make a cup for a dirty pour. All right. That needs a tiny bit more pouring medium. You don't want it as runny as the pouring medium, but it also should run off of your stick pretty, dribble off pretty easily if you're not sure you got the, the ratio right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. Definitely gonna want some paper towels, by the way, as part of your area protection because we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna make some fun messes. Gonna get my stick out of there. You don't really need your sticks afterward. Uh, you can always recycle your sticks for another project or just keep them on hand as paint stirs. So now I'm gonna put it just, I'm just gonna dribble a little bit of each of these on here. Now, if you want to, you can kind of, this is just gonna be completely random. Oops. Definitely going to put my cups on the, uh, on the paper this time, because otherwise they will dribble all over my table. Now, we're going to if you want to, you can take your finger and smear a very thin layer of medium 
all over your canvas, with just like kind of just a tiny layer all over your canvas before you get started. That will help you smear everything around. Um, it'll help it with the flow, but you don't have to. Hmm, let's see, what do I need more of? Definitely need a little more. Just a little squig of smear. I bet you can't guess my favorite colors. Let's do a little more of that. And I think we do need a little more white just for funsies. You don't have to use any white in your or any metallic. I've got some metallic gold to go in here just because it's fun. I didn't mix up very much though because, you know, it's a little bit of a long way. And uh, to be frank, that paint is expensive. <laughs> metallic, good metallic paint is uh, almost as expensive as the metal itself. All right, so we've got some cute little drips and dribbles here. Now it is time to just let it do its thing. So you can see this is a little more blobby, for lack of a better word. I'm just going to encourage gravity to pull the paint, and you can use your fingers. And let gravity pull the paint over the sides. Like I said, you can kind of get this is the other option if you don't want to just smear some pouring medium. You can kind of grab a color that's going to be in the area and just start smearing to kind of get a get a flow going. But you're just going to tip from side to side, kind of like, hmm. Think of something that you have to tilt. I want to say a pinball machine, but I know that's not right. It is kind of like the tilt function on a pinball table. <laughs> so I'm sure half of you watching this are like, what? I guess it's kind of like tipping a Wii controller to get things to happen. So you see I've got a little spot right here where the bare canvas wants to stay stuck. I'm going to poke those spots and get some, get some paint flowing around here. All right, so now the paint is flowing. It will go whatever direction it needs to. So if I want to keep this big shape, I can. Or I can kind of keep changing which direction it's going and the pattern will get more delicate and more interesting as it goes. You can kind of control which colors go where, but not really. You are just kind of facilitating the process. You are just letting gravity do its thing. So now I'm just trying to get paint pretty equally distributed all the way to the edges. I don't really care what it ends up looking like. I just want it to be, like there's a spot right here that doesn't quite have enough. Come on, go to the edge. Oh, and see, I didn't have enough going off the edge there. I want some stuff to drool over this edge. Oh, and see, we're getting all kinds of fun stuff going on the sides. And you can wipe that off or you can just let it dribble. I am trying to get it kind of even. Oh, I think we've got it pretty even now. Yeah, so you can just let it pour off the sides while you're working. If you're working with a bigger surface, you're definitely going to have a lot just blopping off the edges just to get it all the way to the edge. And I'm actually going to let this ooze back towards this other corner here for a minute just to make things interesting. It's funny, you can see like the middle of the canvas is going much faster than the edge. And now it looks like there's no teal. So let's let that pour back the other direction just a little bit. I do want some teal in there. Ah, hang on. We have a wayward bum tack. But that looks pretty cool. So let's let that one sit. See, did I get that thumbtack back in on far enough? 
Oh, I think I did. So this one's pretty good. I'm going to tip it around a little more. You can kind of use your finger again to kind of encourage it to level out into the corners. Um, or if you're working really big, to drool all the way off the sides. Just that way things look a little more interesting. And it will continue to ooze a little bit as it's working here. Ah, my hand. And this is only round one. So you can just let that ooze. Okay, so let's try this one and see what happens. I am going to do a little bit of medium dribble around the edges, just so you can see that that flows a little easier. We're just gonna kind of rub this around. We're just getting a base, a base flow going here. Kind of like buttering a dish before you cook something. So that it comes out better later before you bake. All right, so now we're just gonna let this ooze. Whee! So now I'm sure you can tell why it is called. Ooh, I just stuck my thumb in the other one. Ha <laughs> ha! Whoopsies! Don't do that. <laughs> I'm sure now you can tell why it's called a pour. We are pouring paint, and it looks cool. Oh, we're just gonna let that ooze. Oh man, this one's turned out really... So you can see this one's oozing a lot easier. So if you like a little more control, you can do the... Uh, you can skip the medium. If you, or you can skip that little primer thing I did if you want it to really, really flow. You probably want to do it. Oh man. I mean, it actually looks kind of cool. Let's dribble it this way, though. Like I said, there's no wrong way to do these. It's just fun. You're playing. And that is a good thing for your brain, to just play. Just because we're not kiddos anymore doesn't mean that's not a good thing for our brains. I like that, but that is a lot of white right in the middle. So I'm actually going to take my stick here and I'm going to dribble a little more turquoise. Let's do some dots. How about that? Let's see what happens if we do some dots. those not circular. <laughs> Actually, just for kicks. Let's drive my finger through it first. And we'll let them dribble around. See? I'm also going to dribble. Kind of break some of this up. Yeah, there we go. A really fun thing to do is take a plastic fork and just drag it through and make marble patterns, um, like marbleization patterns. That is just a hoot. Love doing that. There we go. Now I'm holding this by the side. Ideally you would hold underneath so that you don't end up with uh, fingerprints all over it like I've managed to give it. I'm going to smudge this. further in that corner just for kicks oh see I just dribbled on my table this is why I put paper down see that looks really cool so that is just a regular pour now we're gonna do a dirty pour oh I need another towel Woohoo! this is messy Woohoo! this is her fun all right so set that aside Ooh. Actually did manage to get some paint where I didn't want it. <laughs> Whoopsies. So we've got these guys and I'm gonna set them aside for a minute. And I've got another canvas. 
So I've got a bigger canvas to do the dirty for because you're gonna have more paint volume to do it. Also, I wanted to show you how to do a clean edge on these. I taped all along the edge of this canvas with some white artist tape, and then I taped around again and left some of the tape. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get it. So you can't. I left it so that some of the tape is sticking out. Now you can use pretty much any kind of tape for this. That's a little stiff. Duct tape works great. Uh, you know, gorilla tape, masking tape. You might want to double up the masking tape, but um, pretty much anything other than your regular clear tape will work. Actually, packing tape might work okay. But anything other than your regular, you know, paper tape works pretty good. Um, so you just want to put one layer down along the edge of your canvas just to make sure it's covered and then another edge sticking up to kind of turn this into a tray. Now, they do make pouring trays that have um, a, a gessoed board set down into a wood frame with a lip so that it already has this lip for you, but you can pretty much turn anything into one of those just by putting some tape around the edge. Super fun. All right, so to get started, now we're going to dirty pour. So I'm going to take a little bit of medium and I am going to smear around so we get that nice flowy surface going this time. And I am using a stick, a popsicle stick, because my hands are now very disgusting. <laughs> Actually, they're kind of sticking to the stick. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to be able to put the stick down. Um, the pouring medium by itself is kind of gluey. Remember how I said this is basically glue with color in it? That's totally what I meant. So I'm just going to smear this around. Just get a nice, nice buttery surface for our cookies. I mean, a nice, nice surface for our pouring. And it doesn't have to be smooth or anything. I'm just trying to cover as much area as I can. This will also help kind of seal off um, the edges where the tape is to keep colors from running down the side. Hopefully we won't have any run. It's okay if you get some dribbles, but um, you know, when your goal is to not have any, it's always nice to achieve your goal. All right, once again, de-stickify my fingers just so I can handle things. Okay. Ooh, hang on. My previous work is oozing. So let me move it to a flat place. There we go. Okay. Hopefully we've prevented the oozing. So now to do a dirty pour, you want to take another cup that's bigger than your uh, the ones you've mixed your colors in, and you are going to actually I have this folder I want to do. You're gonna put your paint in here. of each color. Doesn't really matter what order or what amount. You don't really get to control any of it once it's going in this cup. You're just messing with it. Come on. Drop some gold in there. And I'll do just a little bit of white. So we're hoping that this comes out, hoping these colors in this order will look kind of like an ocean wave. We'll see what happens. All right, here goes nothing. Like I said, you do not control this. It is just entirely what it wants to do. Ooh, it looks like the... White all ended up underneath. All right, so I'm gonna put some over here and over here. So I think I've got enough paint to do this whole surface. Should be enough in there. Yeah, see all the all the white went there. I don't even know if we ended up with any. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Anyway, it is time to move this stuff. Now you'll notice since I didn't tape it, I don't have any, uh, don't have any thumbtacks in this one because I don't really need it. So 
paint is not going. Ooh, look at that. That's weird. The trick here is to keep it moving without spilling out of your little tray. <laughs> You're trying to get it to all link up without coming out of the tray and to look cool. Okay, so we've got everything going that way. So let's see if we can just get it to ooze back this direction slowly. Because it really looks cool right now. <laughs> Trying to not have it completely overtake itself and ruin the really cool thing it's got going on. But like I said, you really can't control this. And the last time I did a pour just like that, it literally looked like ocean waves. <laughs> this is completely different this time. Oh, I did get a little white. It's just hiding. Hiding. I see it's pulling up from the other color. But this is where you can really see that the colors aren't mixing. They're making stripes next to each other. Oh, that looks neat. All right, I really like that. Let's put it this way a little to get those gold stripes to open up. See what I mean about it looking like an agate? I actually really like this. So I'm going to set that down. And I'm just going to take my stick and very gently encourage this paint to go to the tape. Gently smear it. This is what I was doing with my finger earlier. I'm just using the. Because it's going to settle and level as it dries. I don't want it to want it to do all the way across. Looks like we've got another blank spot over in this corner. Let's see if we can get some. I'm actually going to smudge this back and forth a little bit so it looks like it belongs. And we've got a little bit in this corner. Not a ton though. It's not going to need a lot of encouragement to get into that corner. And these two corners are really full. Ta-da! And as it's sitting here, you see that some little bubbles are popping up. The colors are going to change and move as this dries. And it's going to look like really, really neat when it's done. <laughs> it's going to look really cool. I'm very excited about this one. So I'm going to set this over on a flat surface. You do want to let these dry overnight. Maybe a full 24 hours, depending. Technically, technically they dry in three hours. That is a lie. <laughs> Just leave them alone. Don't try not to touch them. I know it's really tempting, but try not to. So last but not least, um, I'm going to show you how to do a skin. Um, and we're going to do a dirty pour for the skin just for kicks. So we're going to take whatever's left in here. I believe all that white disappeared. That was so weird. I'm just gonna kind of pour things in here. Come on, you can come out. Blurp, blurp, blurp. I'm gonna do all kinds of colors. Get a little, little bit of gold in there just for kicks. Because it's fun. Come on, I know there's a little left in here. Yeah, come on out. I feel like after this video, I'm going to have to do one more pour. <laughs> I, I thought I halved the amount that I used last time because I had so much left over, and I still have a ton left over. So I'll just have to get out another canvas. Oh darn! Like I said, this is just a really fun thing to do and see what happens and play with colors and then make fun things. Now, to do this, you're going to want to do it on some plastic wrap, some plain film. 
um, I am going to wrap my to keep it flat because if you get wrinkles in your acrylic skin I know it sounds really weird to call it that but if you get wrinkles in your skin it makes weak spots so I'm going to tape I'm going to wrap up this piece of plastic this is the plastic out of the front of a picture frame <laughs> I use it for painting um, but I'm going to stretch my cling film really really you can see how smooth I'm trying to get it that's pretty good I'm gonna stretch it really smooth on here and you can do this with a piece of cardboard or a piece oh don't stick your fingernail through it like I just did fortunately that was on the edge and that's okay tape that um you can do this with a piece of cardboard or a piece of board you know just get a piece of wood laying around just kind of stretch your cling film really smooth across it and that'll help your skin flow nice and also come off nice and not have any breaks or wrinkles in it while you're working just gonna kind of fold those pieces back yeah it's pretty smooth did i stick my fingernail through it right there no okay good all right so this is my thing and we're just gonna Gosh, it looks like <laughs> it looks like stones or candy already. I'm gonna have a lot more teal this time. We'll see what it does while we move it. Now, skins, you don't have to necessarily do them with different colors. Um, a really fun thing some artists do with skins is they take just a tiny bit of color and add it to the pore medium so that it's just a translucent color, a little bit see-through. Um, and then they'll make very thin designs all over for their skins. And then they'll layer the skin up. You can like make fairy wings out of that and it looks really cool. <laughs> you can do all the veins and you can put holes, you know, like have like funny Swiss cheese holes in it. Really neat looking. You can see where everything mixed more and I kind of squiggled it. It's got more of that ooh, pretty agate stone geode look to it. And the area where I just blobbed a bunch of color um, has larger blocks. So that's kind of the fun of a dirty pour. You don't have as much control over what's going to happen. You're just going to get some funky stuff. Ooh, I like that. I like that. That's cool. I might have to cut that out and make a make a big pendant or something out of it. That'll be neat. So which and one thing you can do is when these are dry and the let them dry for seriously let the skin dry for several days, then you can peel like release the cling film and then peel it off the cling film. It does take it if it doesn't come off the cling film right away, don't worry, just let it dry for a couple more days. Eventually it will come off. So you can cut pieces out of it and put them in a bezel and put some epoxy over it and it makes a nice piece of jewelry. Uh, or you can just um, put a Capcom over it, that works too. Um, like I said, you can paste these um, onto another surface and use them in part of a multimedia piece. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, and like I said, they're flexible, so you can actually like turn them into bracelets and rings and stuff. It's really, really, really fun. And like I said, there's no way to do it wrong. So go have fun, uh, get yourself some pouring medium, and go make a fun, happy mess. Again, my name is Allison, and I'm with the Marietta Cobb Museum of Art. I hope you've enjoyed this arty party, and I will see you again soon with another fun project. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go scrub my hands for like 20 minutes. Bye.